Why, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm Dion van Heerden, here in my home in Cape Town, putting the finishing touches on the soundtrack for Warhammer 40k, Shooter's Blood and Teeth. Today I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at the soundtrack and how it all came together. We're going to take a look at the technical and stylistic considerations that went into it. We're going to take a look at our multi-intensity music system. And of course, we're going to take a look at how the Goff Rockers track came together. I hope you enjoy it. As with any game soundtrack, the first step was receiving the brief. And it was with great anticipation that I awaited this one. Good job, Postal Service. I retired to my study to peruse the document, and I have to say that I was immediately impressed by Rogue Side's clearly defined vision and ambition for the game soundtrack. Yes, of course, it suddenly all seemed so obvious. So, having thoroughly studied the brief, I decided to get to work. And as always, the first port of call was playtesting the game. Having been reminded that I needed to actually write some music and not just crump humies, it was time to get to work for real. While we knew from early on that the soundtrack would be primarily heavy metal, I also knew that the gameplay was dynamic and I wanted the soundtrack to be able to accommodate this. Therefore, we opted for a multi-intensity music approach. We have two tracks representing the two primary gameplay states of combat and exploration, and the engine is crossfading between them as the player enters and exits combat. The transition is seamless, creating the illusion that, regardless of how often or when we enter or exit combat, the piece was composed that way. This not only requires minimal technical overhead on the part of the developers, but also allows me to write longer form pieces. This track was one of the first I concepted for the game, called Crash Landing. Most compositions for this project started life as just drums and guitar. I always want an instrument in my hands when I'm sketching the initial idea, and this is roughly what it would have sounded like initially. While composing, I'll always have game footage going, either in the video window of my DAW or on a second screen. I'll also frequently fire up the game and have the riff looping in the background while I play. This sort of immediate contextual feedback is incredibly important. So once I have a core idea that I'm happy with, I'll use it as a seed and write around 30 or 40 minutes worth of riffs. These will form the foundation of the track. Since heavy metal is the core of the soundtrack, these high intensity tracks are usually what's written first. It's usually about midway through the process once I have a decent structure going, but where it's still limited to just being guitar, bass and drums, that I'll start looking at the low intensity variant. 
Since the music can crossfade at any point, it's very important to keep the player's ear orientated harmonically between the two versions, and for me, the foundation of this is adapting and aligning the bass tracks. Here I've brought the low intensity tracks bass down to compare the two. So even though the low intensity one is half time, I'm ensuring that at no point do they ever conflict tonally. Once the two are harmonically aligned, I can start embellishing and building out the arrangements for both. Where the multi-intensity system provides us with a great deal of variety on a per track basis, the soundtrack is given a sense of stylistic diversity by having the individual tracks themed according to the races or factions the player encounters, as well as the levels they pass through. And here are a few examples. Two months ago, I was incredibly excited to learn that Shooters Blood and Teeth would feature a performance by an orc band called the Six Shooters, playing on a giant fire spewing stage during the boss fight at the end of the orc shantytown level. At the time, I was writing a fast paced piece of punk thrash metal for that level, and it occurred to me that the central instrumental hook fit extremely well with the title of the game. So, I locked myself away for a few days, cooked up some lyrics, and emerged with a demo. The lyrics, a sort of anarchic, orky space pirate anthem, were extremely well received, and Games Workshop proved to be outstanding collaborators in getting the music exactly to where it needed to be. All that was left was to find our lead orc, and after a great deal of searching and several rounds of auditions, we found him in Audrey or Don. For me, it was the moment I pressed play on your recording when you did the wah. It's wah! Yeah, yeah. I, just knew, I just knew like, okay, that's it. We're done. We're sorted. We've got our org. <laughs> I had so much fun doing it. It was uh, something that really, really inspired me. Uh, uh, being in a, in, a, in a room, being able to, to sing for something that you're very passionate about. But it's just like a huge, huge honor. So yeah thank you thank you so much for everyone that's been listening or that's going to listen it's gonna be rad I'm a 
I hope you've enjoyed that sneak peek at the soundtrack for Warhammer 40k, Shooters, Blood and Teeth. There's still plenty to see in here, but we don't want to give away all our secrets just yet. The game comes out later this year, so don't forget a wish list. Man's gotta eat. Until then, I'll just be here playtesting. Goodbye.